Hello and welcome to Should I Wish Someone Told Me, a weekly series of educational conversations where my guests and I talk about all of these shits that we wish someone would have told us so that you don't have to figure it out a hard way. I'm your host, John Renee, and today joining us, we have Mama Shannon, <laughs> therapeutic coach Shannon Dyerly of power.place.purpose over on the Instagrams. And what we're going to be talking about is a continuation of our boundary series. We're going to be talking about how to uphold boundaries during the holidays and all the shit that we were someone told us about that. And mm-hmm. so when you're listening to this episode, we invite and encourage and suggest that you <laughs> think about things from past holidays that have stressed you out because we've all got them, right? Like mm-hmm. Shannon's got them. I've got them. And whether or not you said anything in that moment, you know what I'm talking about. When I said it now, you're probably like, oh yeah, that one time. And so Mm -hmm. that's an indication as to where you could probably use a boundary. And so think about what incited that feeling and how you can use the tools that we are going to be sharing today, because we're going to give you some Mad Libs. We're going to explain a lot of things um, to actually help this holiday season go that much better. So let me introduce you to Mama Shannon. If you do not know, now you're about to. (laughs) <laughs> Shannon is a therapeutic coach. She combines her master's degree in counseling with her life coaching certification to help clients reach their goals. When you work with Shannon, you can expect a safe place to explore your beliefs and their origins, challenge your truth and their truth as you understand the impact of those beliefs. This is to help you develop a deeper sense of who you are so that you can choose a path forward that aligns with your authentic self. You can find her online at powerplacepurpose.com. No spaces in that, just Mm -hmm. all spelled out. Or you can find her on Instagram at power.place.purpose. And both of those will be linked in the description. Is there anything else you'd like to add or mention? That was a beautiful introduction. Thank you for having me as always. Um, I just want to say this topic is near and dear to my heart, particularly around the holiday season. It can be like one of those rubber meets the road moments, right? Where like, I've been talking about this, I've been working on myself and now I have to actually do some things. So just listen, give yourself a little bit of a breather um, as you do so. And and know we're, we're all, we're all in this together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well said. And thank you for coming back and continuing to have these conversations. Um, yeah, let's let's dive into let's dive uh, in. our conversation for today. So what is some shit that you wish someone would have told you about boundaries around and during the holidays? Yeah, I think um, I was thinking about this and <laughs> I think more than any type of boundary, boundaries around the holidays to me feel really scary. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of fear that comes up when I think about saying something to someone in my family Um, because my holidays tend to be family gatherings. Um, A lot of people's are, I think. Um, And there's a bigger risk, I think, there within that population that you're going to say something and you're going to not only upset the holiday for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to, for years to come, have some sort of story that gets told over and over oh remember that one thanksgiving where shannon said blah 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 and you're like here we go again so all of that is to say i guess i wish i knew that i could and i'm practicing this right that the fear is valid Mm -hmm. it's okay to feel it and it's a sign that you care Mm -hmm. and at the same time so instead of feeling like i have to do all these boundaries or i suck you can prioritize some boundaries. It's okay. You don't have to do all the things. Right. You can choose what's going to be safe for you and appropriate for you. And you just build and you let right. them grow. Right. I think that that is very vulnerable. And I think that that resonates with, I mean, I want to say everyone, but like not everyone, mm-hmm. but like a lot of people, because you're right. Like there's, there's a higher, like you said, there's a higher risk when it comes to our families because Mm -hmm. these are some very important people and it's something where they've known us you know since the beginning in most instances and so there's yeah there's um 
there's a lot of pressure, if you will, Mm -hmm. in that regard, especially whenever I think that is met with a contrast of who you are now and who you've become, who you've evolved to be now that you've discovered who you are, now that you have become, you know, and blossomed and found yourself and done the work, or if you're Mm -hmm. even still doing the work, like all of the above, who you are today is not who you were when you were living in close proximity with them. Like regardless, like time has passed, things have changed. And so, yeah, I think it's something where for me, um, some shit that I wish someone would have told me about boundaries around the holidays is to acknowledge that elephant in the room. We talk about Mm -hmm. this a lot, how people don't acknowledge the elephant in the room. I think that I have in the past been someone who has not acknowledged, right? Like I would be around family. I would notice that like, I don't like this, Mm -hmm. but instead of really getting curious about why or what's happening, what's telling me that I don't like this. I would just be like, yeah, no, I don't like this. Boom, shutting down, like removing mm-hmm. myself from the situation. Mm-hmm. And so um, for me, I noticed that like, I physically get very tense, like mm-hmm. nothing fortunately like ever happened, but like in my body, I just, I get really tense. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't know why, um, but that's just what happens for me. And so once I started to lean into that, as scary and uncomfortable as it was, the only way to it is through it, it was actually an empowering thing because it afforded me the opportunity to say, okay, hey, like, look, I see you elephant, right? Like I, mm-hmm. you're, you're getting tense. Mm-hmm. Now, what's causing that? Is it just being in their presence? Is it when they say certain things? Mm-hmm. And now what do I want to do about that? Like what, Mm -hmm. what are the feelings under the feelings? Like, what is it that, you know, I'm actually experiencing here, like internally Mm -hmm. and what do I want to do with that information? And so, um, and can I add to that, Jonna, I think it's important to remember that part of why this feels maybe bigger or more risky with family is because that stuff, the feelings under the feelings, it's probably a lot more deeply embedded yeah. in our system, right? In right. who we are. And right. it's that much deeper of a thing that if we worked on, we've worked really hard to come through it into or right. see it differently. Right. And so when that pressure point gets gets pushed, it gets pushed that much harder and that elephant is that much bigger. Right. And yeah. another thing that just came up for me as you were sharing that is that oftentimes the things that we have worked through to heal from those triggers that we have worked so hard, like you just shared um, as that beautiful reminder, those things came from these people most of the time. Right. And so, like you said, it's so deeply embedded. And while it's one thing for us to like practice with, you know, someone we just met or a friend that we feel comfortable with or a stranger or anyone, Mm -hmm. it's something where when we are put back in these positions, we're going to talk about this in just a second, like a, a, in a bit of a different capacity, It's something where it's like, well, the, this is the root, like, this is the reason why this is a thing for me. And so when you're faced with that, like you are staring the demon in the eye in a way. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it can be really scary and challenging. Um, I just wanted to add that to what you had to say. And I wanted to share my own, should I wish someone had told me about boundaries that had came up for me whenever I was thinking about answering this question, um, before you reminded me of like that other important stuff (laughs) is that I wish that someone would have told me it's important to plan. It's important Mm. to plan and not only to look at the elephant in the room, but like once you've looked at the elephant in the room, not just be like, okay, I see it. I know that I'm uncomfortable. I know that I physically get tense. I can tell that self-awareness, but Mm -hmm. then what, like, then what do you do with it when you're in the moment? like having a plan to go to. I'm really big on systems and structures. I'm really big on logic and like tangible things. And so like, now what? Like what are those action steps? And so I support you if that is you listening, watching today, because um, we want to make sure that if you are like a Jonna or Shannon, that you have some mad libs, so to speak, so that you can obviously make them your own, but so that you can have something to start with. And yes. so, um, yeah, that's some shit that I wish someone had told me. Like, yeah. I love that, that there's, that there is a lot you can do before mm-hmm. everything, right. Before the anticipated 
challenge, um, that pre-planning. And then during, you can have some go-tos. And then even afterwards, we'll talk about all of this, right? Afterwards, there are things we can do to either reinforce something we offered the, during and before, um, or we can use as a launching point for next time. Right. Yeah. So great segue into a few need to knows that we wanted to touch on um, before we dive into looking at what that before and that preparation looks like. And so the reminder, I already said this in the beginning, but this is a continuation of our boundary series. And so if you have not yet checked it out, now is the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do not delay. Now is yes. the time to go binge, listen, or watch those episodes because like we said, this is the time that we, most of us will really need some boundaries regardless of where you are on your journey. Mm -hmm. And so um, those episodes for anyone who is going to go binge after you get done listening to this <laughs> are episode 53. That's where we spoke about boundaries 101. We really gave a deep dive look into what the four main things are that we see people struggle with. The four main you know, concerns or issues are that people have with boundaries and also what to do about them. Um, episode 68, we spoke about creating boundaries with yourself because when we polled you and asked, hey, where do you struggle most? That is where the majority of you said that you struggle is with boundaries with yourself. And then we also spoke about the evolution of boundaries and how you can tell when one you know, isn't working anymore or maybe when it's working too well. And so mm -hmm. um, we touch on that and how to actually maintain those boundaries um, and how to actually ship them if that's what serves and how to even know, like, if you need to do that And episode again, 72. So this is a continuation of that. And the other thing that we wanted to mention in our need to know is there's three of them. So that was the first one. The second one is that we regress around the holidays, all right? So this is some shit that when I remember where I was, when someone told me this, I remember Ooh. exactly where I was. Um, she was a therapist and she told me this and she was like, well, whenever you go back into the home you used to be in, or whenever you smell the smells, smells are the, the sense that is strongest linked to memory. Um, mm -hmm. whenever you were around like the people, the sounds, all of those stimulations will put you in your healed whole ass new self, right back to wherever you were, whenever you were younger. And yeah. when I heard that, I was like, that makes the most sense of anything I've ever heard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why, by the way, boundaries are so hard because we are, we are back in that place. Like for me, right. it's like 10, 10, 11, 12, that age range right. um, where I was not allowed to, I mean, I was a little kid. I wasn't allowed to say, Hey, you, you know, I want this instead of that. Or, right. you know, I would prefer if we served, you know, cauliflower that's roasted instead what, I mean, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but little 10 year old Shannon was not empowered. Mm. Right. As, as current Shannon is. So there's a, there's a lot of push pull in there. Yeah. And another thing that I wanted to point out as you shared that, and thank mm -hmm. you for doing so is 10 year old Shannon might be, I'm just using examples. I don't want to speak for you, but just to, to help give some context, Yeah, you might resort back to 10 year old Shannon with your parents. Meanwhile, with your sibling, you might resort back to like 17 year old Shannon, let's say. Right. Right. And so that's just to exemplify that the regression isn't going to be like, boom, I'm this one person again, right? right. It's going to be like, boom, hey, I'm back to being 10 with this set of people. Oh, snap, bada bing, I'm back to being 13 <laughs> with like that set of people. Oh, shit, I'm 17 with this other set of people. And so it's something where that's overwhelming. That's overwhelming because yeah. you have this contrast, like I'm this new an improved quote unquote, like, I don't want to, I don't like to use the word improved, but, um, we do get better and improve our coping mechanisms in that sense. So that's what I mean. Um, so I, I'm this new version of myself, this new updated version of myself. And now like all of a sudden, oh snap, I, I'm 10 year old me. I'm 13 year old me. I'm 17 year old me. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And who, who, who do I, sh who do I choose to show up as right. 
um, as opposed to subconsciously feeling like right. that little kid or that right. teenager or whatever. And right. how do I, how do I like take a breath, get through the overwhelm mm -hmm. and, and be present here? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot. And so it's something where even though you are this new version of yourself and you're like, this is who I want to show up as, even if you do, <laughs> and we're going to like, there, there's so much here. There's so much, there's so much gray. This is so layered and complex. Even if, and when you do, those people don't know that version of you. So they're not going to know how to respond. And that's not anyone's fault. It's just a matter of dynamics in terms of your relationship that, Hey, like, I haven't been around this person, this capacity in however long. And so now that I am, they're conflicted because they're like, well, that's not what used to work. And you're conflicted because you're like, this is who I am. And it's something where you haven't had a lot of time, oftentimes to practice this new version of you with that mm -hmm. person, with those family members, with those friends, with whomever you spend the holidays with, because even if you've been around them in some other context, let's be honest. Most of us don't often see friends and family in that capacity because it's uncomfortable. And so even if you have kind of practiced a little bit, you've only gotten, you know, a choice set of opportunities to do so, because even if you've seen them, like, let's say like you go to dinner or the movies, like, mm -hmm. great, that's not the holidays. There's, there's a whole nother like right. thing about this type of a big expectation and celebration that yes. comes with the holidays. Like there's a pressure. And yes. And I, let me add to, I believe strongly that the years that we were on hold with COVID yeah. and all of the change and all of the challenge of the loss and the collective grief and the collective challenge has put even more pressure, I think, on gatherings and physical presence connections um, particularly around the holidays. I mean, I feel that's like in my experience and with my, and with, with the people I know that it is like, well, we didn't get to do this. Right. So we have to do it, you know, and right. we have to do it right. And that, that puts right. an extra layer right. on top to of it too. Bigger or better. Or yeah. Yeah. I give myself that excuse whenever I'm shopping for shoes. <laughs> what? I didn't get to buy shoes for two years. So now I need to buy shoes. <laughs> Shannon, for me, it was 10. I didn't get to buy winter shoes the whole time I was living in Florida. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Shannon has seen and helped me pick out some shoes. So that's why it's a development <laughs> thing. So yeah. So all of that is to just let you know the second thing that you need to know, which is we regress, we, we regress around the holidays because we're taken back to these old times, these experiences, even if it's something where you're not going back to the same place, um, you're likely seeing the same people mm -hmm. and it's something where even if like let's say you don't go spend time with the family this year that's what you've usually done again there's going to be that regression because you know we exist in cycles and so it's going to be that time of the year again it's going to be like the expectation of whatever your idea and belief about what this holiday may or may not mean that's going to still be inside of you whether you're with the family back at home, whether you're with like new friends, like out on the town, whether you're by yourself, whatever. And mm -hmm. so there will be some residual, most likely, right? Like whether we are present to it or not. So I wanted to put out that out there as well, because I think a lot of times people are in the situation where they're like, well, I don't know why I feel this way around the holidays. And like, you know, yes, it could very well be like seasonal depressive disorder, um, or seasonal affective depressive, sad, whatever that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but it also could be because maybe the holidays weren't the best of times or maybe they were, and like, you're missing that, like whatever the case may be, um, right. just wanted to give you that information as well so that you can have that knowledge, um, to hopefully make it make a little bit more sense. So, mm -hmm. um, Great. those were our two disclaimers. So the last disclaimer that we wanted to offer is one from mama Shannon. You want to tell them what it is? <laughs> yes. Remind me how it began. I know it was basically to, to give yourself grace, right? To yes, say, it was to be patient with yourself because mm -hmm. most of us are with family and family is the hardest to set boundaries with. Yeah. Yeah. Because family has known us the longest. I kind of touched on this a little bit um, before, you know, they've known us the longest. They've taught us, they've taught us the most and they, in most cases, 
care about us very deeply. And so there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of beauty in that, right? But if it's complicated for you, there's a good reason. Mm. And you don't have to feel bad about whether you regress or, because by the way, there may be some comfort there. It might be really nice to be 10 year old for me, 10 year old Shan, who's on the couch, who, you know, mom comes over and puts a blanket around and brings a cup of hot cocoa, right? If that's what 10 year old self got to have happen, that sounds pretty good to 50 year old me right now. Like I won't say no to that, but there are many things that will be complicated. Yeah. And because of that, because you're figuring it out, just know that there are all kinds of boundaries that we will be talking about here. And remember that they don't all have to be rigid, right? Refresh your back to boundaries 101. Boundaries are not dividers. If we're using them in the most um, empowered way, they're actually connectors. And so we're saying to someone, this is who I am and I want you to understand it. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. And so you don't have to do all these hard, intense things. You can just think of it that way, prioritize, choose, and, and leave some of them off this year, right? Mm -hmm. Choose what's most important right now and build. Let yeah. them evolve as we talked about in another podcast. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. And whenever you said that, I was like, ooh, like, <laughs> maybe not the face that I made, but it was a similar noise. And <laughs> I was like, that's exactly right. And like we touched on earlier, like, you know, there, there's reasons why. And so yeah. if you've been kind of like flexing that muscle, which we do talk about in all the previous episodes, like, you don't, don't like dive into the deep end. Like if you've never set a boundary before then setting one with your mom, you know, from the, like right off the bat is the first thing, unless you and your mom are very close, but even if your mom and you were very close, it might not be something that is necessarily going to um, create the best result because oftentimes, and we speak about this before. And so I don't want to, you know, harp on it too much, but I do just want to note it here Oftentimes, even when, like Shannon said, our family has the best of their intentions for us and, you know, vice versa, it's something where, like we've said, when we set a boundary, when we enforce a boundary, that shifts the dynamic. And it's mm -hmm. something where even if that other person understands it, it can still hurt. Sure. And that yeah. is really hard when they are people that we love and care about so much. Yeah. yeah. So and so as, hard. yes, yeah. And so as we give ourselves grace, to figure out what, what we need to and want to share. Remember that you can also give the people around you grace to receive that yeah. and learn what they need to learn from it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. yeah. So those are your three need to knows um, that this is the continuation. Go binge, listen to the rest of them. Episode 53, 68, 72. We'll be linking them in the descriptions. And to number two, note that we regress around the holidays and remember why. And then number three, to be patient because holidays, um, or excuse me, because family is the hardest to set boundaries with. And so yeah. this is like, you know, the, the family setting boundaries is not like, you know, one-on-one -on -one, like intro. This is like calculus, like trigonometry. Like, yes. You, yes. Know, you better have gotten your reps in um, <laughs> for anyone who like does fitness. Like it's something that you 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 want to have practiced before you move into it. So with those things being said, we are going to start talking about some specific types of boundaries that people struggle with when it comes to the holidays. And so we asked earlier this week, uh, or actually a couple of weeks ago at this point, by the time that you're listening, mm -hmm. what do you struggle with most when it comes to the holidays? Like what types of boundaries, what types of things? And mm -hmm. the number one thing that people shared was finances. And mm -hmm. so this is an example of a type of boundary. And we touch on some other types of boundaries in episode 53. So things like physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, time boundaries, sexual boundaries, intellectual boundaries, material boundaries, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And finances is one of those. It can also be considered a material boundary, but we want to take some time to speak about that one first and foremost. And we're also going to cover time boundaries, roles and responsibilities, and then beliefs, because those are four very important types of boundaries that come up because um, 
that way I like to like quantify things in that like mm-hmm. sense. So it's mm-hmm. like, hey, like let's let's take the the elephant in the room. Let's take the problem. Let's look at it. All right, it's pink. So now you know what 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 are we going to do about it? And so that's what we're doing here. So finances, time, roles, responsibilities, and beliefs. So yep. when it comes to finances, mm-hmm. we can think about this in terms of um, wanting to buy things for others, right? Mm -hmm. because there's an expectation yes yes and I don't know how many of of us have been in the situation where the the email goes out or the text goes out and it's like we're doing a group gift exchange you know the budget is right the budget is fifty dollars per gift well this is what I'm saying like right someone can throw out an arbitrary number that works for them Mm. that may not work for you right And so how do you handle that? Well, right. that's a financial boundary. That's a, that's a pressure point, right? Here's what I was saying at the beginning. This is stressing me out. This is a tip, a trigger for you is happening. And so what are you going to do about it? Right. Yeah. And when it comes to the financial aspect of it, one of the things that someone had shared is that, you know, with COVID, it's something where they have been struggling to buy you know, just little things just to catch up yeah, yeah, for, for their loved ones. And so the, the thought and the notion of buying gifts is just like, shit, it's a lot, right? Like depending Mm -hmm. on how many people on your list, depending on, you know, the, the expectation of like Shannon shared, like, even if it's like a group exchange, like this, the expectation of giving people things at the holidays is a way of showing love. It's a tradition. And it's something where you don't want to like not be in the group. And we can talk about that primal fears, lack of like not being, or excuse me, fear of not being included, right? Mm-hmm. How we need love and belonging. But it's something where this is also like tradition and like, you don't want to be the one sure. to like break the tradition. And so there's a lot of pressure in that. And so I wanted to bring this up because it's not just the fact that like, oh, there's, you know, like I, I don't have the money to spend, right? It's not just that. It's Mm -hmm. so much more. It's the tradition. It's the community. It's, you know, the way that we are expected from a societal stance, from a cultural stance, that this is what we do at the holidays and that this is how we show love. And so Mm -hmm. um, it's something where when you look at it like that, I hope that that gives you a bit of relief. Hope that that like Mm. releases the pressure just a bit Mm -hmm. and, you know, acknowledging that like, if you're really feeling some type of way about this part of the holidays, then it's not just the money. Yes. Yes. And can I add to that, Jonna? Yeah. Because it because it isn't just about the money. And because it does tap into those bigger values that we place around the holiday season, community, togetherness, caring, expression of love. Those are the things you can lean back on. Yeah. When you're thinking about how do I respond to this expectation and this pressure on this financial piece? Because I think some people also have financial pressure just to get a get in the get in the car and pay gas to right. drive home. Right. right? Transport. That right? was that was my thought. My thought was like, okay, is it pressure yet to buy gifts? Is it pressure to travel? Like expenses like with the, with right. the finances? Like, yeah. Yeah. Airplane tickets. They're crazy. You know, all of this stuff is, is reality. Right. Yeah. And so how do I, how do I share vulnerably, honestly, my reality, if maybe I'm afraid I'm going to get judged or if maybe I'm afraid it's going to hurt someone's feelings. So, so tap into that. And at the same time, know the things you're hoping to achieve, right. The connection, the togetherness, all of that, those might be available to you via a different avenue right maybe not financial maybe you're not outputting a gift but maybe you're saying like johnny you said when you're we talking about this can we meet and go for a walk together i want to yeah. i want to dedicate two hours of time where we walk and talk and i know you love to take pictures so i found a place right that has right. beautiful scenery you could bring your camera right um i know that might sound pie in the sky but but you understand what i'm saying right that there are there are workarounds um, to get to the thing you're trying to get. Right. 
And that's another point to remember when we're talking about boundaries is they're not necessarily all or nothing. There's a lot of in-between space that we can operate in to connect through. Right. Remembering that bridge, remembering the connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that if you see me looking up, there is a spider. And so I'm like, I was keeping an eye on it. Now I don't know where it has gone. Um, which earlier today, someone was talking about spiders. I'm like, no, no, let's not talk about it. Now they're here. So uh, if I, if you keep looking up, that's why um, I'm watching. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not rolling my eyes. I'm trying to. <laughs> um, so yes. Uh, when we are thinking of that, I love what you said. Like, you know, think about the things that you want to get out of that and think of, you know, what that experience is going to give you. Like, why is it so important to like do this at the holidays? Like, why is gift giving like the thing? And Mm -hmm. is there a way that you can get those same, you know, experiences, but for free, like going for a walk, um, writing a letter, like, let's say Mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, thinking of things that you could do that, might actually be more meaningful than just buying someone another candle let's say Mm -hmm, not saying that mm -hmm. like you buy people candles but that's a common gift like people buy candles like it's a thing so that might be you know some different avenues that you can explore when it comes to or a different avenue that you can use to explore if it comes when it comes to experiencing a financial boundary or a financial you know struggle in that way um but let's talk about how do we actually say that Right, right, right. That's what I was just thinking. This is like the, this is like the fill in the blank, right? We have our concept and we have our emotion and we have our, you know, resolution and we're going to fill in the blanks for you all. So what would you say is a good structure of a sentence to kind of operate from? So I think, great question. I think when we are approaching any kind of, I don't want to say let down, but any kind of a no right? Like that's essentially what Mm -hmm. we're doing. So you want to first, I feel, and I'm excited to hear what you have to say, address the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Like let's take it to, um, let's do, cause we kind of have two examples here. So like, let's, let's do both of them. So the, the group situation, the group exchange, Mm -hmm. and then also the, Hey, Shannon, I want to buy you a gift, but you know, here, here's the reality of my experience. So Mm -hmm. let's take it from the group one at first. So if, and when you get that message, that's like, um, Hey, $50, like, you know, exchange gift, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then I think a good structure would be to reach out. Well, a good structure before we talk about the reach out is address the elephant. Like, Hey, like, mm-hmm. I know that this is usually what we do. Right. So I'm addressing right. the thing. Um, and while I am interested in like, give a, like, yes, I support this, like, you know, Um, or like whatever your belief may be, like, Hey, I'm looking to do something different this year. So like address the elephant, talk about like your personal stance. And then from there, it's something where you, the next structural part of it, I believe would be the decline. So we have the elephant. I'm addressing the elephant. I'm letting you know my personal stance and I'm declining Mm -hmm. within that, however you want to, and we'll give you some actual words, but Mm -hmm. within that, if you want, you can also offer an alternative. Mm -hmm. That's a way of doing it as well. Um, and that usually I think structurally comes after the, yes, after the decline. And so this to give you exact an actual like verbiage example of what this looks like, Hey, Shannon, I know that we usually do the $50 gift exchange and I love that tradition. And it's something where right now I am not going to be able to participate this year. Um, So, you know, if there's something else I can do to support with this, like to help you like organize it or anything like that, I would love to do that, but I'm going to have to opt out this year. And so that way that was a double decline. So (laughs) I was like, Hey, elephant in the room. I know we usually do this, Um, you know, insight on it. I want to support. I really love that tradition at the Mm -hmm. same time decline. I'm not going to be able to do it. And then if you want that bonus offer there, how else can I support? What else can I do? Love to do that. And then again, if you won't throw it in there, because like I ain't doing it. Like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) So that is what I would say. What about you? 
I, I love, first of all, I love the structure that you offered, sort of the acknowledgement of the situation, right? The elephant in the room, you know, your honest, your honest um, stance on it, right? Like, I love that we do this, or, you know, the converse is, <laughs> you know, this is, this is challenging for me, however you want to say it. And then the last piece is sort of what the, what the boundary, you know, in air quotes would be, you know, either, uh, and you can soften it in any way you need to. Unfortunately, you know, this year, my, my finances are really tight right. and I can't, I can't commit to it. Um, I want to say a couple things about that. First is you don't have to explain why if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, I know that might feel really hard or uncomfortable for a little, little, little people pleaser like me who doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings or wants to make sure that no one takes it personally, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's okay. You can say, it, you can acknowledge that without explaining. You can say, it's really hard for me to say this because I really love doing things with you at the holidays. Right. But unfortunately, I can't this year due to, you know, due to whatever or your period. Unfortunately, I can't do it, right? See yeah. where my people pleaser came out already? I'm telling you not to do it and then I'm doing it. Um, okay, I'm here, I'm here. Right, thank you, thank you, coach. So all of that is to say, right? You can use that structure, use your words that are true to you in there. Right. right. And then if you want to offer more, like Jonna was suggesting, you know, how can I help this year with it? Um, great, if you can't, then you can just say something like, love you. Thanks for thinking of me. Have a great, you know, have a great time with this. Right. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of feeling you might be having hearing us say this. I'm inviting you to tune into that. What are you scared of? What are you nervous about? Um, and just give yourself a moment to breathe through it because it's actually so super reasonable. And if you think about it, if this is your connector, your bridge to the other person, right? Then you're coming at it from kindness. Yeah. You're coming at it from a communication and a and a respect place. Yeah. And so nine times out of ten, they're gonna be like, oh, okay. Especially with like a group gift exchange. All right, we'll miss you, but thanks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've had to opt out of that shit at work before. I'm just like, yeah, can I not like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all, and it can be awkward, right? No one wants to be the person who says, no, you can offer a different price point. You could say, can we do something else instead? Can we, I mean, you could say a thousand things, right? Can we I've, just do favors and pull them out of a hat? Like whatever, right? I've actually opted out of two gift exchanges and I think about it and both times they were because I'm like, I don't need more stuff. Like, right. thank you. But like, I, I don't need more stuff. So this is in alignment with like my values. Like, right, right. I don't need more stuff. And so this is where boundaries with yourself come into play, right? Like mm -hmm. don't waver on your boundaries with yourself, whether that be a budget, which we're about to talk about, or whether that be, you know, the fact that you just like, wh why? Like, why do I need more stuff? Like, why do I need mm -hmm. more stuff that I'm probably not going to use? However, one time I opted out of a gift exchange and I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they've been brought a gift they were like well you can use this one and I'm like that that's nice um which lets me honest is probably something they just had at their house to like whatever. right sure um, yeah but I got shafted because it was one of those like we can exchange the gift mm -hmm. like, is, mm -hmm. is that the is that the the elephant the white elephant the white elephant yep so yep. it was one of those and I got shafted out of the panini maker of course I was upset about that I'm very sorry yeah. I'm very sorry. Yeah. I, I just as a little side note, I've been so proud of my white elephant gift exchange things where I'm like, oh, this is going to be the one that everyone fights over. You know, like I found mm -hmm. a really good deal mm -hmm. on clearance and whatever. And then like <laughs> my gift ends up being the one that everyone's like rejecting <laughs> or really bummed that they've gotten it. I'm like, come on, you guys. That's so funny. <laughs> Well, it, yeah. it, I was always winner. Like I'm still butthurt about that one. I remember <laughs> who took it. He then made me a panini, Shannon. Oh, he was a good cook. However, it had been in his bag. I used to coach with him. It had been in his bag, and so he pulls it out, and I'm just like, that looks disgusting. Like, like in his gym bag. Yeah. Not okay, like weird. in a separate pocket from like you know his underwear and shit but I mean I assume actually I don't know I ate it it was good but it did not look <laughs> appealing whatsoever 
and he had <laughs> forgotten about it like not like for days but like he brought I'm it sorry. to the gym and like a few hours later was like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh anyway I'm so if anyone wants to make up for it and buy me a panini maker I would not say no exactly exactly <laughs> so um <laughs> there's that so okay let's talk about the other aspects of the financial boundary and the struggle here so when I feel like I need to buy for like everyone so I need to buy for like my sister and for um, my aunt and my uncle and like their kids and like all these other people and it's something where I am like shit right like Mm -hmm. what do I do and so I think that this is what you were speaking to earlier which we could also apply to the gift exchange when it's something where it's like, hey, like I would love to, but what else can I do? So same, I believe, structure usage there. So like Mm -hmm. address it, support, like, hey, like I want to do this. Um, You're important to me. And at the same time, them dollars though, (laughs) like. Right, right. I mean, every, yeah. yeah, What else can we do? So same structure there. And so I think to me, that would look like something like, hey, Shannon, you know, I know that it's traditionally a time of gift giving and I would love to give you a gift. And at the same time, I'm, you know, not able to this year, if you want to keep it, you know, without an explanation, or you can say Mm -hmm. I'm working on my budget. I really have a goal for my finances. And Mm -hmm. so I'm being really mindful of that. You know, what would something be that we could do that would be, you know, you would appreciate that you would enjoy as well as if it were a gift, maybe even more, um, that might also be something where it was easier for me to like foot the bill on that, whether that's a dinner, whether that's a walk, whether that is you writing them this like beautiful letter that makes you cry, like saying that, Mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. And so that's what I think I would say in that sense. And like, would be like a Mad Libs for that. What do Mm -hmm. you think? I think that's, I think that's really useful. I think we're gonna, we're gonna create some, some resources for people from this conversation. And and I, I think of it as sort of like a decision tree, right? Like, here's the problem. Here are some ways you can address the problem. One thing I was thinking about when you were sharing it, that might be sort of before this conversation, if you want to do the preemptive rather than the dooring, because this is sort of the dooring, right? Mm -hmm. Like someone said something or already opened this door. So now we have to respond to this door. Um, You can boundary with yourself, realize, let's say October, November, that you are going to spend your holidays in a specific way around finances, around time, around energy, around travel, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can take the opportunity in a different type of structured sentence that I'll offer in a minute to share that information with the people that you normally spend the holidays with in a very specific way. So uh, someone, so in what I mean is there may not be an elephant in the room yet. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm standing at the door. Right? So he's on your shoulder, but he hasn't tr- trounced in yeah. and made his appearance. Yeah. So you don't need the elephant in the room piece of that sentence, but you could say, hey, you know, friends, what, whoever you're talking to, just wanted to reach out as I'm thinking about the holidays mm-hmm. and then share the thing that you want to make sure they know is important to you for this year. Mm-hmm. I've, you know, I've decided that it's really important for me to spend time with people I love rather than give gifts. Mm-hmm. You know what it just came up for me? I'm like, that could be your proposal as the gift. Our gift to each other this year is that we are not going to buy each other gifts. Like right. you, you, whatever money you would have spent on giving me a gift, invest that in paying off your debt, invest that in your rent, like invest that in whatever. Right. And that's, that's our gift to each other. Yeah. 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 You can, sh- you can say it that way. You can say it all it all I'm trying to say is a, like this information can be shared before mm-hmm. someone else um, says or, or puts a demand on your finances. Right. You can just you can just say, hey, guys, this is what I'm doing this year. I've made a you know, or if you want to cap it, you say, I've this is the thing I care about. I've made a donation in all of our names to X, Y, Z charity. Right. Yeah. Whatever it is, you decide 
what it wants to look like. And you can say that ahead of time. Right. Yeah. I love that. So there's lots of different ways that you can approach this. It's just going to be a matter of like what works for you in terms of finances. Mm -hmm. You could also look at your finances, see how much you know budget you have collectively to spend on everyone and then decide, you know, how to allocate that, whether you just have people over like and do a nice dinner, whether you make a donation, mm -hmm. like whatever. And so yeah. um, I hope that this is helpful. More questions, comments, concerns, let us know either in the description or by sliding to our DMs over on the socials and we will mm -hmm. support you there. But I think we covered finances. So let's touch on time, roles, responsibilities, and beliefs um, one at a time. And then we'll talk about that like pre, intra, and post situation and like what that can look like, how to apply, like what we're actually talking about, which you've already alluded to in here. Mm -hmm. Like you know, There's some, some conversations we can have before, some that we can have in the moment. Um, but we'll talk a bit more about specifically what that looks like. Yeah. So when it comes to time, so this is another struggle, if you will, yeah. you know why I paused yeah. there, but this is another uh, concern when it comes to the holidays. And I think that's because, you know, we have certain expectations that like, oh, well, you know, Shannon's always made the turkey. Of course, she's going to do it this year or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Um, John has always helped decorate. So that's a lie. Like John is not a decorator, but um, <laughs> that kind of stuff, that, that, kind of right. a, that kind of a thing. And so when we are in that experience, um, what would you say would be a way to tell me that you're not going to make the turkey this year? <laughs> Um, let's take the same structure that you've offered before. Here's the issue. Here's my experience. Here's what I'd like to share with you about it. Um, hey, Jonna, I've been thinking about Thanksgiving and I know I always make the turkey, which I love to do. Um, you can, and PS, here's a little tip. Keep it clear. Don't leave any room when you're making these kinds of statements for questions. <laughs> Okay, because people will be like, oh, well, she kind of said she didn't want to do it, but then she didn't tell me who was going to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so say the, say the thing. And then I would say something like, because I am traveling, mm. it's going to be really hard for me to do the turkey. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to pass the baton this year. Who do you think we can ask to, to take that on? Mm. I like that because yeah, that's going to give them some choice in the matter. And it's not like a hard, like, nope, not my problem. Like mm -hmm. you're working on it as a collaboration. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I like what you mentioned as well about like, let's like be clear. Also, let's not give like too much of an explanation. Right. Um, so like clear and concise. I think yep. are like good, exactly. good insights to have there. Um, so when you are, or if I were to decline the decorating, I think mm -hmm. that if we're using the same structure, like, Hey, I know that I always help out decorating this year. However, you know, it's not really something that I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that someone else, like, if you want to, you don't want to like volunteer you know, people, um, right. but you have preemptively spoken with like, let's say Sarah, your right, cousin, mm -hmm. Sarah, and she loves to decorate. Be like I talked to Sarah and she would really like to help out with this. So mm -hmm. like that way you've already previously gotten their consent. And again, you're not just saying like, Hey, I'm out. You're saying like, I'm out and I found a replacement kind of mm -hmm. a thing. And mm -hmm. so that, um, gets you out of it and, you know, let someone else do it. If they're someone who might enjoy it more. If you mm -hmm. don't have a Sarah, I mean, I, <laughs> I suggest like, you know, looking for one, um, seeing who else might, you know, want to do that. If there's no one else and you're like, well, I'm the only one, then mm -hmm. it might look like something where you're like, hey, I know that we really go all out on decorations and that's really tiring for me mm -hmm. and it's a lot. So what do you think about not doing as much this year kind of a thing? Yeah, love or, that. Even if it's like not doing as much, what do you think about just doing this instead kind of a thing? Because you want people to agree with you. Here's a psychology mm -hmm. tip. You want people to buy in. And so mm -hmm. um, you want them to be able to have some say in it because they feel like whenever they are given, you know, that freedom that they 
they've made a choice in that regard. And so Mm -hmm. you could also offer like two choices, like, Hey, instead of doing all this, what if we do a or B? Yes. So that's like another way that you are not doing it all. And at the same time, like you're reaching a compromise there and still upholding your boundary with yourself, still holding your boundary with them and like your time and also offering a solution where they too are a part of it. Yes. There's that bridge again. There's that connector. And I will say too, this is a perfect example of, of an in-between, right? You're not saying I'm totally doing this and I hate it, but I'm doing it anyway because everyone needs me to. And you're not saying, no, I'm out. You're saying, can, can we find some middle ground here? Cause it's getting to be too much for me. Yeah. That compromise. Love it. Um, let's talk roles and responsibilities. So this kind of goes into what we were just sharing around time. If you Mm -hmm. are the person who has always, you know, cooked the dinner or who has hosted or who has done the decorations and helped out in that regard, if you're the one who's always done the thing, Mm -hmm. then I think that both solutions that we just offered would also apply there. Whatever Mm -hmm. that thing is, that is taking up your time, whatever that responsibility or that role Mm -hmm. is, even if it's getting ice and you're like, I live like nowhere near, like that's so far out of my way, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, think of that thing and then use the structure that we have suggested so that you can figure out what verbiage works for you and those that you're going to be communicating that boundary with that will support you in not having to continue to live into this role and responsibility that you're like, I don't know why, I, I don't know how you even got into doing this in the first place kind yes. of thing. Or yes. you know how, but you're just like, well, I don't want to do it anymore kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. I think and can I add, are, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Um, so can I add to, when we think about roles and responsibilities, I think about a few other things. Um, and it is within a family dynamic. Um, for me, I think of things like, who's the person that always makes sure the kids are, mm. are, you know, behaving, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. to speak. Right. Who's, mm-hmm. who's the, cause I can remember being like, you know, the older cousin and being in charge of the younger cousins. Right. Mm-hmm. And not liking that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, a, that's, that may be not your experience and it's not appropriate as an adult to be thinking about it that way, but you know, who's always the person who are you always the person who fill in the blank. Right. Um, think about it this way too. Are you, um, are you cast into a role that um, means you have to be an emotional support to someone who's struggling during the holidays? Mm-hmm. If And if that's hard for you, is there a way to communicate that it's hard for you? The holidays can be really hard emotionally. And if you have one person who's, who's really struggling and, and counting on you to be their support while you may be struggling and have all sorts of other things going on, how do you manage that role, right? So there are a lot of different ways this can look. An example of how um, you could offer that to someone that you're trying to support them, but it's that it's hard and you don't know what to do. It's just, you know, sometimes a boundary can show up as a question. It can be something like, hey, I noticed you're really having a hard time this year with the holidays. Yeah because we've been talking a lot about how sad you are. How are you getting support around that besides me? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, and that if, curiosity. If, um, yeah. Yeah. That curiosity. Cause there's no judgment there. Right. It's like, how are you doing? Um, how can I, how can I help besides what I'm doing? You know, Um, because, and then when, then, you know, a conversation can ensue and that might be a place where you can say, I feel bad because I want to be there for you, but I have all these other things going on too. And I have people counting on me and responsibilities. And so I want to make sure I let you know that, that I care about you. And at the same time, my time is, is limited. It's not from a, I don't want to be their place. It's like a, I, I, I'm, I'm taxed. I'm overloaded too. I think that's important. And thank you for bringing that one up because I think a lot of people might fall into that category or might share that experience because oftentimes it is something where like, you know, if you're just the one they've always talked to, or if you're Mm -hmm. like the only child or 
the one who's not so in it because you live far away, but like you're visiting now. Yeah. It's very much something where someone can just like dump emotionally on you. And so that would be like you shared mm-hmm. an example of, you know, that's a role or, you know, that you have been playing. Mm-hmm. And that is somewhere where, you know, these emotional boundaries like come into mm-hmm. play. And so I love what you shared about like the curiosity, like just getting curious. Like, I'm not saying like, no, but also I'm like, what else are you doing? Kind of a thing. Right. Have you thought about talking to a professional? Have you thought about like working with a coach or mm-hmm. um, a counselor or anything in that regard? And mm-hmm. that's a way to support them um, as they also seek support in other avenues and other ways um, while also offloading, you know, the, the responsibility that has been oftentimes, sometimes just like dumped on you without. Yeah. It can just be out of balance. It can just be one of those where you're like, you know, like I, I love you. I want to be able to do this, but like, I, I, I can't. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. A boundary isn't always like me saying no, because I'm choosing, you know, some arbitrary thing for me. A boundary right. is is a lot of I'm realizing there's something going on for me here and I need to talk to you about it. And I'm realizing I have a limit here or I have a question here or I have I have a need here. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's a conversation starter. Right. Yeah, it's a lot of self-awareness and conversation. Um, and curiosity in that sense about, like you said, like a conversation started, like what's happening, like that communication, mm-hmm. that connection. Um, and then we'll also talk more about the reflection component of it, like how to, mm-hmm. how to rinse and repeat what worked and what didn't. Um, mm-hmm. After we talk about our next type of boundary, which is beliefs. So mm-hmm. um, beliefs can be anything, obviously, that you believe in. Uh, we can talk about religious beliefs. We can talk about political beliefs. Mm -hmm. We can talk about food preferences. We can talk about sexual orientation. We can talk about anything and everything under the sun, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And when you are with family, you know, most of us, like we have shared leading up to this, it's important that we, you know, if they don't approve, they at least accept And so whenever we are, you know, in a space where let's say you vote one way, your dad votes another, then that can be a real (laughs) point of contention. Um, If it's, you know, your family is very religious, but you have, you know, stepped away from that to Mm -hmm. pursue other avenues, that can be a real hot button. Um, Mm -hmm. We can talk about food preferences. Um, If it's something where like, hey, I'm a vegan now. And the rest of your family are not. Uh, that can also look like, hey, no, I don't want seconds. But like, oh, that's going to hurt the host's feelings. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, how they feel that like you love them, you know. So mm-hmm. there are so many different things. Um, we can also talk about sexual orientation. Like if your you know, family is like, no, you know, hetero, but you're like, hey, not that. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's, there's so much that we can go into with beliefs. And so like Shannon mentioned earlier, we have created a resource where we're going to give like more specific um, type of fill in the blanks, like we gave you with the structure, Mm -hmm. but to share for the purposes of our conversation here and now, um, when you are in this space, we have come up with a few different scenarios that we want to offer um, so that you can safeguard everyone's Mm -hmm. mental and emotional health and well-being. Yeah as we are sitting at the table, as we are on the couch, as we are in the presence of these people who are just in opposition or Mm -hmm. um, not in an accepting place with what it is that we believe. And so would you mind going ahead and sharing some of what you said, because uh, they were really great. And I want to make sure that we touch on that. Thank you. Yeah. I think, I think it's important to acknowledge that this, this type of situation maybe less of a bridge <laughs> right. and more of a line right? Um, because our beliefs and the way in which we live to support our beliefs are, are often, I mean, fundamental it, defining characteristics of ourselves. Yeah. So if someone disrespects that 
in their words or in their actions when you're with them. You, you, you having a way to say thanks, but no thanks is really important. Um, and you don't have to feel bad about it. Right. Okay. Right. So here's, here's a couple ways you could do that. You could say something like, I appreciate how strongly you feel about that presidential candidate. I feel strongly about mine. And I think because they're so different, it's best that we're just not going to talk about it for the sake of having a good time. I'm really glad to see you. Let's start there. Yeah. Right. And that presidential candidate could be any topic. Right. Right. Um, another way to, to address something like that would be, I, I get that you don't think it's a big deal to make fun of this group of people or this way of living. Right. Mm -hmm. But it is to me. So thank you for respecting my wishes and, and, and stopping what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it's specific and it stops the conversation. Yeah. And if, <laughs> hopefully. hopefully, yeah, I was going to say, that's, yeah, this isn't, we're not offering this to suggest we'll just avoid it. Don't talk about it. Kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. We are offering this because, and I, I shared something about this a few months ago, sometimes like not responding is safeguarding for your mental health. And that is advocating for your own needs, because if you are at the point where you have enough awareness of like, Hey, you know, this person is just not going to get on my side about this, then mm -hmm. it might be safer for you to mm -hmm. just not do yes. it and to just not have that conversation because at the end of the day um if it's going to do you more harm than good in the long run then it's not worth the yeah. short term like telling that person off or screaming at them or whatever yeah. um yeah oftentimes like obviously do what you want but i'm here to tell you i said some things and i've done some things and yeah it's yeah. oftentimes something where when you just cannot meet eye to eye, no matter how understanding you're being like, right. We spoke about this mm -hmm. in the last and the evolution of boundaries. Like you might be doing all of the things you might be using compassionate communication or nonviolent communication. You might be setting your boundary. You might be being understanding. You might be mm -hmm. using you know, eye language. You might be doing all the right things and they still are just not going mm -hmm. to, they're, they're, they're just not getting it. They're just not meeting you in the middle. And so mm -hmm. that's when we are offering and like, you know, exactly what Shannon said, like, I get it. I, mm -hmm. I, I get that you, I don't understand it. I don't agree with it, mm -hmm. but I get that that is what you believe and I respect that. And so I would appreciate if you'd respect me and what I believe. And yeah. this conversation is done. Like I say, yeah. let's not talk about like, let's agree right yes. now on one thing to not talk about this for the rest of the time, yes. this evening or day yes. or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think it's a lot to ask someone to res like, to respect your beliefs if they're different from theirs and they're dedicated to them. But I hope that if you look at it as I ask you to respect me mm -hmm. as I'm respecting you um that 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 can be a starting point for things to just drop off from that topic right and into something else right let's go outside and you know let's go outside and throw, you know shoot some hoops or do you want to put on the game or let's go get that freaking awesome dessert that you know aunt land made you know stuff like that let's or just change the energy my personal right? favorite let's not talk about it and i'm just not going to talk to you for the rest of the time yeah you could do that too like, absolutely yeah because we can offer you and we'll we have done this in the resource more specific things that you can say if you do want to try to have this conversation with people who are in opposition of your beliefs um but it's oftentimes something where there's other people around like right. it's something where like again like the holidays are different and so while we're not saying like don't do it we're saying like think about it like be prepared um if mm -hmm. you're going to do this and so it's something where you know if we take it to the example, like, so shut it down. If it's something where you're just, you're not going to come to a conclusion. If it's something like politics, if it's something like sexual orientation, if it is something, um, 
that you know like abortion like if it's some like really strong mm-hmm. thing that like like a lightning rod right like, like a like a, a very yeah. clear issue that's a dividing yeah. line yeah um shut it down if it's something like i want to touch on food preferences they're not wanting seconds because that's kind of like eh. um me in the sense of like you know one of the things that we do with the holidays is eat and so i want to touch on that as well because if it's something where you're like hey i'm a vegan now then prepare your own food like mm-hmm bring it in advance. Um, if they don't want to make it for you, or if they're being like snotty about it again, we can shut down that conversation. Like, look, I, uh, you know, you're eating this, I'm eating that. Why do we have like, let, let's leave it at that. Yeah. Right. Um, same thing for wanting seconds, um, or not wanting seconds rather like, Hey, like I'm happy that, you know, I'm, I'm grateful we have extra food. And also, you know, I, I, I'm not going to partake of more because right. like, I'm, that's I'm again, cool. a boundary I have with myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to add too, when you're thinking about food preferences, I want to also talk about like alcohol. I mean, mm-hmm. there, there are many, there are many of, of us who may be walking into holiday celebrations where last year we were having alcohol and this year we're not. Um, that is a whole other conversation or, um, and, and an in-depth topic. Just tell them, but I funny. don't, I'm just kidding. don't tell them. <laughs> <you're funny. laughs> <No. laughs> it doesn't work if you can't actually be pregnant. Um, but all of that is just so ask like, questions about something else. Yeah, they sure will. Um, I, I want you to know, I, I see you. That is a very challenging Um, it's very challenging, all of these things that we're talking about, but in particular, when you've made a very specific lifestyle choice, that's, that speaks to like being in recovery. Um, you may be, you may be put in a position when you say, I'm not drinking that people want to know why, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They may Mm -hmm. also do that for why aren't you eating the turkey? Why aren't you, you know, why don't you like this? I made it special for you. Right. But in particular around like alcohol. No one asked you to. <laughs> right. Um, you know, just have a plan for what you're going to say. Just have a plan. You do not have to justify any of that. Yeah. You can say, you know, thanks. I'm just, I've decided not to, not to drink this year. Yeah. At Thanksgiving. Yeah. Which. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. And so there are, like we said, we'll give you more specific examples in the resource Uh, which we'll tell you about here in just a second, but, um, all of those primarily are ones that, yeah, like you can totally have the conversation. We'll give you some examples on how to do that. And at the same time, it's oftentimes something where advocating for your own means and your own, you know, yourself and your mental health and well-being, And even the other persons as well is just like, we're not talking about this. Like, we're not talking about this. I respect you enough. Like respect me enough. Like we're not talking about this and yeah, just shut it down. Um, if you want to pick it back up later, cool. But yeah, like oftentimes it's just, it might be best to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Um, so you mentioned something and we've kind of weaved this all throughout when it comes to the pre- the during and then the post or like after Mm -hmm, kinds of things mm -hmm. that we can do. And so I want to touch on that before we wrap up. And in this notion, um, we've kind of touched on it, but just to be very clear on what we mean by these three different kind of like phases of preparing to go into the holidays, Mm -hmm. the pre would involve things like we asked you to, like the question we asked you to consider in the very beginning of this conversation, like what have been some instances in the past that have upset you? Um, because that's probably somewhere where you need a boundary. And mm-hmm. so if that's the case, right, like then thinking about what that's going to look like, not only via like the Mad Libs in terms of like, what do you say in that moment? Do you shut mm-hmm. it down? Do you say this? Like who could do the decorating? Who might, you know, be able to do the cooking? Like that's part of it, but also in the sense of actually practicing it. Mm-hmm. And yeah thinking about the outcome that it Mm -hmm. might produce. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would add to that, that in that pre that preparing stage, that's where you're thinking of your plan. Right. And there are some pieces of a plan that you can do before the dooring part. So you can see, so if you're going to be to use the example we did last time or earlier, um, if you're going to preemptively say, I I don't want to participate in any of these gift exchanges, 
that's where you would offer the information to everybody with your statement. Right. Um, and, and I would also say in this preparation stage, remember that you are not in this alone, by the way, right? There's probably a person in this whole situation that you're walking into that you trust, yeah. right? And you can lean in onto that person as you're preparing your plan. And you can have some agreements together and say, help me when yeah. <laughs> it looks like I'm stressed out. Yeah. Or can you remind me we're going to leave after two hours? Um, you know, can you stay with me when I'm with this person? Right. There are lots of things you can do for yourself um, that, that we didn't touch on that include having someone who's supportive to you there. Yeah. I love that. Like phone a friend yeah. or an ally, like, mm-hmm. yeah, if like create like a signal, like, Hey, if I mm-hmm. like, you know, look at you or like whatever, like touch my ear, like, I don't know, whatever signal you yeah. want, um, then come to my rescue. If I love what you said about like, if this person is talking to me, like, will you be there with me? Like, I think that right. these are things that we don't consider, but that will make the holiday experience like a world of difference. Right. And And what's beautiful about those things is you're, you're not having, that's a prioritization piece, right? You're not having to share with the person who you need help from your bestie or your partner or whatever to be around that it's hard for you to be around them. Mm -hmm. You're just finding a way to support yourself as you're in conversation, because you know, that's not a boundary you can really enforce with that person. It's not, it's not going to land. It's not going to work. It's just going to create drama. Right. So you do something for yourself. There's the, there's the preparation piece. Yeah. And then the during the way that looks is the during you're there and your person's with you. Yeah. And then the, the tail end of all of this is now we've done these things, right? Mm-hmm. We've lived, we've lived the holidays differently. What do we do now? Did it work? Did it flop? How do we take those things? Or was it something in between and, and learn from them and, or, use them for next time. Yeah. Yeah. I think all that's great stuff. And when, yeah, to, to take it back, I wanted to touch on a couple of things, like also with, um, the pre part. So practice, right. Like Mm -hmm. do this planning. Um, you also had mentioned the pre share, right. So like, if Mm -hmm. you realize like, Hey, I don't want to do the holidays or excuse me, I don't want to, you know, do the cooking or decorating or whatever it may be, go Mm -hmm. ahead and preemptively say that so that when you're in it, it's not a surprise to anyone. Like, right. If you know, like, Hey, I'm vegan now. And I wasn't last year, or I'm drinking now. I wasn't last year. Like, um, say that if you know, you know, that like, Hey, I don't want to talk about politics with uncle Bob say something before, if that is available to you, like, Hey, I know that we both feel very strongly politically, can we agree to not talk about it? Like, Mm -hmm. or let's agree to not talk about it. Like whatever Mm -hmm. you feel would be the better avenue to take. Like, these are all things that you can do preemptively. Yes. Whenever you're actually in it, obviously that's like Shannon shared, like the friend is with you or the accomplice, the ally, um, whomever Mm -hmm. that's you actually saying the thing that you prepared for in the planning phase. That's you actually doing the thing, like the actual like implementation of it. Mm -hmm. Um, when you were doing this, I want to advise you to not only take that reflection post, which we're going to talk about, you know, which we already did talk about, but also to give yourself some time and space to like check in, like your phone or excuse me, I watches tell you to breathe every hour. Maybe you mm-hmm. turn on a similar notification just to remind you like, okay, like check in, like, you know, how's it all going? Like, how am I doing like scale of one to 10? Like I love my one to 10 scales. Like how am I doing with everything? Like, is this okay? Do mm-hmm. I need to like shift anything? Do I need to talk to my accomplice? Like whatever. And I also want to point out whenever you are in the intra, if it is something where in the moment you have to set that boundary with uncle Bob about the politics mm-hmm. that as scared as you are, they're likely also feeling some kind yeah. of way. And they're probably also unprepared because they didn't listen right. to the conversation. So right. let that be leverage and power that you have over that experience. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say about the intro. And then for the post, obviously what Shannon said, do a reflection, um, see what worked, see what didn't. um, And if it serves you, even ask the other person, maybe you didn't explicitly say like setting this boundary with you, but maybe you did some Mm -hmm. things differently. Ask them like, hey, you know, I really enjoy the holidays this year. How was it for you? 
kind of a thing mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. just see how they're doing. Um, but yeah, like Shannon said, what worked, what didn't, was it a hybrid? How can we rinse and repeat this cycle and take some of the things that we learned this holiday and carry it over next year? Or maybe you kind of practice for, you know, the November holiday and then you, you know, yeah. from there and apply it for the December holiday. Yes. Like something like that. Love um, that. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this pre, during, and post type of phase work. Um, yeah. But we hope that that starts you off with a good reference point so that you can figure out what that looks like for you. Yeah. And can I add one more thing about what you could do afterwards? Yes. Um, if you found something worked really well, or if you know someone tried really hard mm. to respect your boundary, one of the things that would be really beautiful to do in the spirit of connection is to reach out to that person or or respond about that situation and say something like, I'm super grateful, right? That I could ask you to change the way things went this year. It helped me so much. I hope you know, like that I know how much it took or I appreciate the, the pivot or whatever it is. Express some gratitude. If you offered something and someone received it, you've started building a bridge and the gratitude you offer keeps that bridge strong. Yeah, like the maintenance. It also, yeah. And it also gives gives them some sense like, oh, you know, they see me. They understand that it was hard. Uh, that's really, that's really, I think a beautiful thing to be able to do. And the converse, if it, if it didn't work, right. If it was a really (laughs) shit show, (laughs) you know, there's another elephant in the room and there's another opportunity when you're ready to ask about it. So you can say something like using our structure. Hey, I know when I tried to say X, Y, Z, it didn't go over the way I wanted it to. I, I get it. And I wish I could do it over. So now here's the part where I say what I'm going to do next. Right. So if you ever want to talk about it with me, I would love to, or so if you want to move through that together, let's have some time together, whatever you want to do, you can do that too. Yeah. I think that's great advice. Yeah. I love that. Like, Hey, uncle Bob, like, thank you for not talking about politics this year. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. We got to laugh about, you know, building a snowman when I was five, I had forgotten about that. Right. Right. You, you like say, thank you for this. And look what I got, look what we both got as a result. And what that's going to do as well is like you said, start to build that bridge, that connector, but it's going to help them feel more comfortable with you. Yeah. So that hopefully you will be able to arrive at the place where you can have a conversation about the politics, about Mm -hmm. the, um, abortion beliefs about the sexuality, about whatever it is so that you can find some common ground in that way. Um, so yeah, let your boundaries be connectors. Yeah. Bridges. I love that. Yeah. I love that as well. Okay. We have covered so much good stuff. I yeah. hope this was helpful. We talked about shit that we were someone to told us about how boundaries show up around the holidays that, you know, we regress that it's important to plan. It's important to address the elephant in the room that, you know, we have done a lot of other work and conversations. We've had a lot of other conversations on the topic of boundaries, episode 53, 68, and 72, <laughs> where we spoke more in depth about um, building the foundation for boundaries, creating boundaries with yourself, and also what evolving boundaries look like. And mm-hmm. we also spoke to you know the fact that boundaries with the family and those that have known us the longest are the hardest. And so um, we gave you some opportunities and some examples for some Mad Libs that you can take and a structure that you can use. So addressing the elephant in the room, um, expressing your experience, your feeling about the thing, offering the decline, and then offering, you know, the the other solution or getting curious or offering another solve there and how you can kind of take that framework and apply it to your specific experience to hopefully uphold your boundary and also create that bridge um, and start to build it. So like, we essentially gave you like the tools to build the bridge, if you will. Um, and we, like we said, and like we've referenced multiple times throughout this conversation, we have made a resource for you where we have these opportunities, um, and these different types of boundaries broken down with actual scenarios like, Hey, 
you don't want to cook this year. Hey, you don't want to talk about politics. You don't want to talk about, um, you know, the, the fact that you are, you know, a different type of eater now. And Mm -hmm. so like, what are the things that you can say? And we offer you different levels. So we offer you the hard boundary, like, nope, not going to do it. We offer you kind of Mm -hmm. in between one. And we also offer you the one that is more in alignment with what we shared about offering that, you know, other alternative. Yeah. Alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one that's a bit more, um, fluid and porous in that way. So if you're interested in that, head to the link in the bio, um, or in the description. And so you will be able to find that there. If you're interested, this is going to be a living document by the way. So as you have questions about what boundaries work, um, you can slide into our DMS. If we are free, we will happily support and then also add what you share into this document so that you will just get all the updates as they keep happening, whether you have a question or, you know, you have a question or someone else has a question or <laughs> Sarah has a question. Sarah, Sarah's going to be too busy decorating to answer any <laughs> yeah, questions. Sarah, exactly. Sarah's going to be way too busy. Poor Sarah. Decorating. Sarah's going to so, be like, why is everyone calling me? <laughs> yeah. So um, that's what we have for you. And like we shared, we've given you some examples Um, If you have more examples or more questions about more specifics, then on Wednesday, as you know, we will be polling over on Instagram at Hey John or Renee and Shannon usually shares those at power.place.purpose. So you can then ask us any and all questions that you have specifically about boundaries and we will then answer them on Friday at the after party. But other than that, check the links in the description to follow Shannon, to follow me. Um, and to check out that resource and then we will see you on Wednesday. So that's all I have. Shannon, what do you have? Where can they find you? What do you have going on? Well, you said it all. I am, I am on Instagram. I have my website. Um, I take uh, clients to do one-on-one work right now. That is my, my main focus because I have a lot of other stuff going on. So I'm not doing a whole lot of extra stuff, but I am uh, working with clients one-on-one to help them kind of reach their goals. Look at, look at what's getting in the way of them becoming their best self and loving themselves along the way, because we need to value and honor ourselves. And that's why boundaries are such a passion of mine to talk about, because when we, when we offer them, we're offering them from a place of honoring and valuing ourselves. So Thank you for having me to talk you about this with you. You're so welcome. Thank you for talking about this with me. And without further ado, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing else left to say. So yeah. uh, questions, comments, concerns, slide into our DMs over on the socials, check out the links in the description and we will see you on Wednesday in the polls. And then we will see you on Friday at the live. Sounds good. Hope this is helpful. Share this with someone that needs to hear it. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.